So we need a leader who believes in the people, who heals the gap between the leaders and the people so that you can really have something like a republic and a genuine democracy. So one example of this is, if you're a patriot today, you're called a nationalist. Now, as you know, George Orwell made a difference. Patriots are people with a love for their country, a love for their own place, say Wendell Berry style or whatever. Patriotism is wonderful. God has made us all diverse. Humans are the most diverse life form on the earth. We all live in different places and we have love for different places. We should be patriots. Nationalism is when you make an idol or a god of your nation. And that, of course, is very dangerous. But to dismiss all patriots as nationalists is crazy. I mean, some of our smart aleck historians have called me an American nationalist. I'm not even American, but I'm a believer in the best things of the ordered freedom of the American Republic. I'm not a patriot because I'm not American, but I do believe in Americanism at its best, and I'm certainly not a nationalist. But it's the globalist critique of patriotism that is called nationalism. So whether it's the elite disdain for ordinary people or the globalist disdain for patriots, there's a lot of confusion and we need to answer it partly by clearing up the terms, but also by healing the gap between leaders and the people they lead. You have a wonderful verse in the Old Testament for the leaders who lead and the followers who follow. There should be a natural element of leaders and followers together.